Ask your pharmacist season 4 is proudly brought to you by Dragnet, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Let Up Pharmaceuticals, Chango, Luex Healthcare, Samos Pharma Limited, Mega Life Sciences, and the Tema Christian Eye Center. This program is in partnership with the Ministry of Health. You're welcome once again to another episode of your favorite award-winning health show, Ask Your Pharmacist. I'm Yawa Samoa Mfafu and I'm always excited to be here with you to engage you and bring you more information on your health. This program is proudly brought to you by Dragnet, your number one online pharmacy. Download from the Google Play Store or App Store and have all your drugs delivered to you. The Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Amicus Humani Generis. Pharmacists, indeed, are the friends of the human race. Let up pharmaceuticals. Get your Letamin, Phaleron Zinc, and Letamox from any pharmacy and stay healthy. Let up pharmaceuticals. Quality healthcare. Chango. Download the Chango app for all your crowdfunding and group contributions. Download from the Google Play Store or App Store. Luex Healthcare. Your trusted and valued healthcare. Samus Pharma Limited, Advancing Lives, Mega Life Sciences, We Care, and the Tema Christian Eye Center. Visit the Tema Christian Eye Center for all your eye care needs. Locate them at Tema Community 1, adjacent the St. Paul's Methodist Church, or call 054-171-7819. And a big thank you to the Ministry of Health for partnering with us on this. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, the show continues. When on campus and not well, I worry no more. Thanks to Dragnet. With the Dragnet app, I can chat with a pharmacist anytime for my medications and they are delivered to me right here on campus. I am a trader. If I need drugs, I cannot leave my goods and visit the pharmacy. All I need to do is click on the call feature on the Dragnet app and I speak with the pharmacist. The drugs are delivered to me right here. Dragnet. I want to swap. Pa, pa, pa. As a businessman, moving around to search for my medication could be very frustrating. But now, with the Dragnet app, I'm able to upload all my prescriptions and have them delivered to me wherever I am. The Dragnet app also allows me to order refills for my mother to treat her chronic illness. Dragnet delivers all the medications to her on time. It's so reliable and convenient. Download the Dragnet app from the Google Play Store or App Store. Dragnet, your number one online family. Araba, there are some people at the door. Go and tell them I have traveled to Russia. Yes, Daddy. Where's your father? My father said I should tell you he has traveled to Russia. Your father has killed me. I sent him money from America to complete my house for me. He he trauma. Trauma. Our own student association contributions. He he trauma. Trauma. Even the money from the fundraiser for Kweku surgery. Oh! He he trauma trauma too. Don't be a victim. If you're contributing to a project, alumni dues, or any public campaign, Chango is your best choice. Chango keeps track of all donations and gives you the power to know exactly where the money goes. Chango is approved by Bank of Ghana. Call 0270-066-614 or visit changoapp.com for more information. Oh, Araba. Chango for your groupings and crowdfunding. You're welcome back to another episode of your favorite award winning health show, Ask Your Pharmacist. Today we're going to have an interesting conversation on a topic we don't like to talk about, but it's very important that we talk about. That is erectile dysfunction. And we're here with Dr. Mark Jadozi. Dr. Mark is the head of pharmacy at the International Maritime Hospital. He's a cardiac and critical care specialist pharmacist and a university lecturer. He's a fellow of the Ghana College of Pharmacy and a fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacy. He was a chief pharmacist of the recently ended African Games 
and a health coach with expertise in nutrition and exercise science. Dr. Mark, it's a pleasure having you once again. Thank you. I hope you're doing well. Doing very well. And yeah. how about you? Oh, I'm also good. I'm also good. Today we're talking about a topic that you know the way culturally Ghanaians are. We are a bit shy to talk about these things, but today we're discussing erectile dysfunction. So if you can open up for us, um, when we say erectile dysfunction, what is it? Thank you. So erectile dysfunction is a disorder or disease that affects men or males. Okay. And typically it's your inability to get or maintain an erection. So it's the inability of your penis, your male organ, to get or maintain an erection firm enough for you to be able to have complete sexual intercourse. Okay. So in the simple terms, that is what it is. Uh, they define it in se several ways. Some people will call it impotence. Uh, some people will call it, you know, I can't get up, I can't get it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are different ways that uh, we put it. They can't man up. They can't man up, yes. Yep, and it has been it's one of the major challenges for several men, um, which um, affects relationships, affects our mood, affects our ego, affects yeah. a lot of things. So, yes. So that's very true because it affects a lot of men um, emotionally and, you know, their ego. So with this condition, are there different types and, you know, what causes this, um, this erectile dysfunction we're talking about? So uh, for the average man, uh, okay. for most, most men that will experience erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. it could be due to a few factors. Okay. Uh, it, can be, it could be due to a medical condition. Okay. For somebody, uh, the only way to detect that they actually have a medical, a, type, a certain type of medical condition could be when they start experiencing erectile dysfunction. Oh, okay. Sometimes our practices also could lead to that. Okay. Uh, medicines we take, um, certain alcoholism, yeah. or drinking too much alcohol, um, so many other practices. But aside from that, uh, there may be about three main causes okay. within the body that can affect your uh, organs' ability to stay erect. Okay. Number one is your circulatory system. Mm. Because for your um, male organ to stay erect and then be firm, uh, it requires blood flow yeah. into, uh, into that area. And then also valves that can keep the blood from coming out. Mm. And that typically is what will help you stay erect to be able to complete or to undergo uh, uh, sexual pleasure. Yeah. So uh, if anything happens within your body that affects your ability or the ability of the blood vessels to supply blood into the male organ, uh, it, uh, it stay, it's, staying, it's staying firm uh, for sexual, uh, uh, for any sexual activity can be impaired. Number two is your nervous system, okay. uh, which includes your brain, your spinal cord, and the nerves. Uh, you, something, you need to have feeling down there around the male organ or even uh, to be able to stay erect. Yeah. So anything that affects the brain, any, any medical condition, anything that impedes the travel of the impulses okay. or electrical activity to that area to stimulate uh, may affect your ability to hold an erection. Okay. Then uh, third one is your endocrine system. Uh, there, which basically is uh, the glands that uh, create or release certain types of hormones, especially testosterone. So those who have low testosterone typically uh, may not be able to dilate the blood vessels that go towards that area to be able to have a very firm erection. So okay. those are some of the um, the three uh, different med, uh, bodily uh, uh, issues that can affect. Um, erection but then yeah. the next one is some of the medical conditions the conditions, diseases yes. that yeah. uh, we talk about so number one you're, you're talking about diabetes okay and i use the word uncontrolled diabetes mm. so when your sugars are not very well controlled long term you may have um uh, it may cause um uh, impotence or um erectile dysfunction okay number two is hypertension or high blood pressure so long-term high blood pressure also can affect that area high cholesterol, mm. vascular disease basically means any disease of the blood vessels where there is narrowing. When any of you know, the blood vessels that supply blood to that area are narrowed, means there will be less blood flow to the area. 
and then also chronic kidney disease. So when right. you have any type of kidney damage, that can also uh, cause uh, erectile dis uh, dysfunction and then uh, build up of fatty uh, materials inside your blood vessels, so called atherosclerosis or blockages in the blood vessels can do that. And then also low testosterone, which I mentioned, a me uh, medical condition called stroke, which is a brain disease, okay. uh, can also affect that and then also epilepsy. Okay. Aside from that, uh, there are other people also that may not directly be related, people who have certain types of psychiatric conditions, right. anxiety, nervousness, and things like that also can affect. Right. Uh, and then also, then we look at even the, I call it the structure things or the things that can affect the penis itself, okay. like a penile fracture, certain okay. practices or trauma to that area. You get hit, uh, it's, it's a muscle or it's, or it's actually tissues. Yeah. So they can also break. So there are different things, injuries to the pelvic bones, or surgery, uh, people who have uh, certain types of other medical conditions like uh, called what we call BPH, okay. benign prostate hyperplasia. Sometimes that also does come with some sort of uh, erectile dysfunction. Right. And then people who have cancer, undergoing right. chemotherapy mm. or weird radiation therapy, sometimes uh, they also can, can, can have that effect. Okay. So um, there are lots of things, medications. Yeah. Uh, the other one is uh, whole, a whole host of medications. Okay. And I have to sound a caution here that sometimes right. we think that as soon as we have hypertension or diabetes or what we call the non-communicable diseases, yeah. and then they put us on medicine as a man, the thing is going to die. Yeah. The, the answer is no. It, you know, there are some medicines whose side effect can cause erectile dysfunction, but the good news is that there are alternatives. Okay. And whenever we put you on a medication and you realize that that is happening quickly, report back to the pharmacy, report back to your physician, and there are different options that we can put you on to make sure that you are, you are safe. Okay. Because sometimes managing your hypertension, managing your diabetes is better, will actually will keep you from getting into erectile dysfunction. Yeah. And there, there are always options. Because you usually would hear people stop taking their medication. They have diabetes, hypertension. We see that um, practice most of the time and they are like, hmm, this one day I'm afraid. So sometimes they don't tell their doctors and they stop taking they stop, it for yes. some time. And then, so all those things, what, what, what do you advise um, such people to do properly? So if, if you realize that the medication that has been prescribed to you is affecting your manhood or your ability to perform sexually, okay. the, the best thing is not to stop the medication Okay. But actually reach back to your physician and let them know there is this problem. That's what's happening. There is a lot of clinical studies or evidence that shows that as men, that is the least thing we want to discuss with our physician. Yeah. But there are times you have to just open up and you'll be surprised how well that can help you. Yeah. Uh, you may also even uh, open up to your, your partner. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is once you tell the physician, there is help. Mm. There's help, there are alternatives, there are options to yeah. keep you alive and also and allow you to also enjoy what you need to enjoy. Yeah. And just to mention that some of the medicine classes that are corporate, some antidepressants, okay. uh, blood pressure medications, some of them, okay. and, and I use that cautiously, diuretics, medicines okay. that help you drain a lot of water from your body, uh, they can also cause some of that. Antihistamines can do that. And then some chemotherapy medications, Parkinson's disease medications can also do that. Some prostate okay. cancer medications and some of the medicines that are used to treat, to treat heart diseases. Right. But the good thing is there are a lot of newer options, safer options that you can still take and be okay. Okay, that's, that's, that's very informative. And I also wanted to ask about, so we are talking about the medical side and the medical conditions. There's also possible things like you overwork, then you're stressed, maybe a societal aspect of it. Are there those things that can also lead to erectile dysfunction? Yes. So aside from the medical conditions, there are also environmental factors, Okay. Um, social factors, a lot of things. Trauma is one, but then mental, stress, yeah. stress on the job, tiredness, Pocketitis, not having money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, image issues. Yeah. So you don't even trust yourself. Yeah. And if you don't have the confidence, sometimes without yeah. the confidence, you, you, you can't even get an erection. Yeah. So there are a lot of psychological things that 
And so there are some times that when somebody comes to me and tells me, oh, I have this problem. And I, after doing a physical assessment or even talking to them through, I realized that it is really not, they don't have a problem, but yeah. sometimes it's just something is confident. The comfy is not there. Yeah. <laughs> they're not confident. They're not courageous. They, they feel like they, they are unable to. And once within you, you feel like you can't do something technically. It's difficult to. Yes, you yeah. can't overcome. Yeah. So then I start doing that more of psychological counseling to them. Um, even and then I tell them sometimes you even have to engage your partner. Thank you very much, Dr. Mike. That's very informative. So viewers, we're learning that apart from medical conditions, there are also environmental and psychological factors that can affect us. It's even, a very, even the yeah. certain. The even certain, the certain, yeah. Yes. Where you find yourself. Yes. Okay. Where it's going to happen. <laughs> and all then that all, comes. You know, you have to plan a lot of things ahead. Yeah. So all of those things come to play. Very, very, very interesting conversations here. So we'll take a, a quick break. And when we come back, the show continues. Yeah, mamu, I call about the bar, Tema Christian Eye Center. Ah, a year in Yari Sabia. Tema Christian Eye in Yari Sabia, a share in Yari Bia, a free in Colemu, a cosy in Penny Fossil. Set a far near, I will say, Mau Drew, and I say near Bay Operation, and I say, say, oh, yeah, space in Poa. Your dispensary, fully functioning dispensary, ah. A drobia, a hiao se, a wasi a demau. Now, would you go in so many con, ubenibi, yet bemau, umbeto? Ne hiao se, a year operation beyond a hanso, ye a mau, se a true sukana se a laser now here, and also a ye water, my Christian eye center ha. A ye juma fiti, a juada, copy memnenda, I ye Monday to Saturday, ye walk, tema comity one. Opposite Golden Chopstick. Restaurant and now say with me besides St. Paul's Methodist are sorry no Tema Christian Eye Center changing lives through proper eye care. You welcome back viewers. You're still watching Ask Your Pharmacist. And today we're having a very interesting conversation with Dr. Mark on erectile dysfunction. So doc, what are some of the signs or symptoms I will be seeing to show that I have erectile dysfunction? Uh, first of all, I have to say that it is a more of a self-diagnosed okay. condition. Mm. Uh, the person with the medical condition will have to initiate the call or the, the need for help by approaching a uh, clinician about it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the... Uh, that's just because, as a, as a clinician, I can't look at you and say you have ED. Yeah. But you will have true. to come and report it to me. Yeah. So some of the simple things that may be reported or we can ask about is, uh, are you able to, or let me just say, for somebody who possibly may have erectile dysfunction, these are the common things. They sometimes or only sometimes are able to get erection before sexual intercourse. So sometimes it doesn't happen at it all. It doesn't happen. Mm. But some, or sometimes they're able to. And then sometimes they're able to get erection before intercourse, but they're unable to maintain, maintain the intercourse. Yeah. So the, they can, the penis can become very hard and stiff and ready to go. But as you start, it gets stopped. Can't continue. Mm. And they can't finish. And that brings a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depressed depression, let me put yeah. it that way. And then there's the third group, which is completely unable to get an erection at all. Mm. As much stimulation as you can, nothing happens. Then the fourth group is usually the ones that will require a lot of, pro I would say, prolonged stimulation mm. before they can get an erection. They can get, well. So those are typical symptoms that anybody with an erectile, dis erectile dysfunction will have. Okay. So those are the things that we look at to determine if you require treatment or not. That's interesting. And is there anything we can do to prevent or reduce the risk of getting erectile dysfunction or impotence, as people may call it? So uh, the first thing is um, going back to the root causes. Mm. Uh, the best way to manage any medical condition is to manage the root cause. Mm. So if we, uh, when a patient comes to us, we do a full history and then we look at what could possibly be there. 
the reason for the erectile dysfunction or impotence. Okay. Then we take it from there. So if it is medical condition based, for example, hypertension, diabetes, uh, depression, anxiety, stress, whatever it is, we try to attack that first. Yeah. Because if you do not attack it, but you keep on treating the ED, you do not solve the problem. Mm. So the first thing is attack the root cause, cause, resolve it, and then long term, you get relief from erectile dysfunction. Then um, also uh, looking at some of the social factors, looking at some of the behavioral factors. Uh, there are some people that uh, they, are, they do not have ED or, or impotence, but they still want to use performance enhancers. Mm. Uh, doing that uh, eventually will make you dependent on those on the, yeah. performance enhancers. So typically, it is one of the, uh, the things I would say to prevent future erectile dysfunction, don't do it. Mm. But if your BP is high, make sure you control your BP. Uh, if uh, it's diabetes, uh, if it's stress, uh, think about what is causing it. If it is hormone related, see a physician, they have ways to manage those uh, aspects of it. If it is due to a medical condition, stroke, brain, spine or whatever, whatever, or uh, over, over, overweight, okay. you have to reduce your weight. Reduce, yeah. uh, there are some um, things that you cannot, uh, or risk factors that you can't manage, like age. Uh, erectile dysfunction happens in typically men above 40 and up. So you cannot reduce your age. But yeah. if you have diabetes, manage the diabetes. If you're overweight, uh, manage the, uh, or lose weight mm -hmm. if possible, medically or physically. If you have depression, see, uh, seek uh, support. And then if you are physically inactive, start becoming active. Okay. And if you smoke, uh, it's better to quit smoking because smoking also can contribute to it. That's, that's okay. Yeah. So are there any treatments or interventions available for um, impotence? Yes, there are. Okay. Uh, so there are several types of treatments uh, ranging from medications to supplements to um, lifestyle changes and also psychosocial help okay. and psychiatric help depending on what is happening. Uh, we may prescribe medicine that you have to take just before you are uh, <coughs> you go do the do yeah <laughs> or you go uh, for the match mm. or there are also medicines that you take daily to just help uh, improve your sexual uh, function there are supplements like the one you see in front of me yeah. Yeah. that has mm. been uh, tested and clinically proven to support men uh, who have erectile dis dysfunction or yeah. impotence. Okay. It does not cure, I have to say that it does not cure Cured. your impotence, mm. but it may help uh, improve your performance. Okay, Dr. Mark, we are coming to the end of such an interesting conversation. Do you have any final words, especially for we, the young ones, coming up? Yes, uh, my, my few words to everyone, and including the young ones, is uh, we have so many aphrodisiacs out there there are so many things being marketed as performance enhancers for erectile dysfunction yeah. or impotence. And uh, I, I just wish to sound a caution that it is not everything that may be safe for you. Mm -hmm. It is not everything that may be appropriate or formulated to do what, it's, what it says it will do. So we should be cautious. If you are not sure, consult your pharmacist or consult your physician or reach out to your healthcare professional. Uh, and also, the key thing actually to avoid a lot of uh, the impotence issues is management of the root causes. Yeah. And then also making sure that if you take medicines that will affect you, you let the physician know. Okay. Uh, so that they, because there are now options so that you don't have two complications, your medical condition and then erectile dysfunction. Okay. So key thing, let's take care of ourselves, let's do the right things and we can enjoy ourselves. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mark. It's been an interesting conversation on erectile dysfunction. Up next is Do's for Healthy Living. Hi, family. It's me again, Pam Nelinofori, and I'm bringing to you today's Do's for Healthy Living. And we are in the International Maritime Hospital with Pam. Eunice Ajuman in Kansas. Okay, thank you so much, Pam, to, for joining us today. Today, we're going to discuss a very important topic. Some patients walk into pharmacies, buy antibiotics, or take them from friends, and then put them on open wounds. This is a very appalling practice we need 
to curb. And we are here with Farm Units to find out why this shouldn't be done. Farm, why shouldn't we open capsules and then put them in our open wounds? So in the first place, capsules are meant to be taken orally. So, and these open wounds are topical, meaning they're on the skin. So you opening the capsules and then putting it directly on the sore or wound is not best practice because it can lead to antimicrobial resistance. Also, the, once the tablets are taken orally, it gets into the bloodstream and gets to the site of um, injury or wherever the wound is. So then it will still work. And for those who want to have antibiotics on their wounds, there are preparations that are in the form of ointments and creams with antibiotics that are used for dressing wounds. So to avoid antibiotic resistance, it's best to use topical antibiotics for wounds other than using the open or the oral capsules or tablets directly on the wound. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, fam. And some of these antibiotics they even use aren't meant for wounds exactly. like that. Yes, so, exactly. Yes. So it's yeah. important that we've been able to educate our audience today that you shouldn't open capsules and put them directly on the wounds. So if you need an antibiotic for your wound, for an open wound, always ask your pharmacist and they will give you a preparation appropriate for your open wounds. This is today's Dose for Healthy Living. My name is Nella Nofuri and see you next time. I hope you really enjoyed another episode of your favorite award-winning show, Ask Your Pharmacist, and you learned something new on erectile dysfunction and your sexual health in general. Remember that this program is proudly brought to you by Dragnet, your number one online pharmacy. Download from the Google Play Store or App Store and have all your drugs delivered to you. The Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Amicus Humani Generis. Pharmacists are the friends of the human race. Let up pharmaceuticals. Get your Letamin, Foleron Zinc and Letamox from any pharmacy and stay healthy. Let up pharmaceuticals. Quality healthcare. Chango. Download the Chango app for all your crowdfunding and group contributions. Download from the Google Play Store or App Store. Luex Healthcare. Your trusted and valued healthcare. Samus Pharma Limited. Advancing lives. Mega Life Sciences. We care. And the Tema Christian Eye Center. Visit the Tema Christian Eye Center for all your eye care needs. Locate them at Tema Community 1, adjacent the St. Paul's Methodist Church, or call 054-171-7819. And a big thank you to the Ministry of Health once again for partnering with us. See you again next week, and until then, it's bye-bye. Ask Your Pharmacist Season 4 is proudly brought to you by Dragnet, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Let Up Pharmaceuticals, Chango, Luex Healthcare, Samos Pharma Limited, Mega Life Sciences, and the Tema Christian Eye Center. This program is in partnership with the Ministry of Health.